Madam President, we would like to congratulate Slovenia with his successful conclusion of the presidency in September, which was not an easy month. And we'd like to congratulate Switzerland with assuming the presidency. We thank the Secretary General for his assessment of the situation in the Middle East, which has become severely exacerbated by an unprecedented spiral of violence in Lebanon and the broadening of confrontation to neighbors in the region. We also to, uh, uh, took account of the positions by Israel and Iran contained in the letters disseminated uh, yesterday. Unfortunately, the Middle Eastern region in front of our eyes is sliding towards a new large-scale war, whereas the Security Council is uh, just there helplessly watching it. The Israeli brutal military operation in Gaza continues despite the demand on the part of the overwhelming part of the international community to stop it. The spiraling of violence predictably led to, a, led to a worsening situation on the border between Israel, Lebanon, and Yemen and in the Red Sea. But instead of using diplomacy, the West Jerusalem authorities unambiguously staked everything on using force. And their American accomplices are playing completely into their hands. They are paralyzing the deliberations of the Security Council. As a result, the new victim of the Israeli military machine is Lebanon. After intensive shelling of Lebanese uh, towns, the southern neighbor started a ground operation in Lebanon. Furthermore, after a series of political killings, including the killing of the Hamas uh, chair of the political bureau, Hanin, the general secretary of Hezbollah, Nasrallah, and other leaders of resistant movements, um, Iran came into the confrontation. Iran, who for two whole months had been showing exceptional, under the circumstances, restraint. From the statements made by our Western colleagues, we drew the conclusion that the only issue that uh, the Security Council has in front of it is a response to a missile strike by Iran. It's difficult to imagine what uh, kind of uh, role the diplomatic process would play when the situation is viewed this way. And it's, it's presented as though all of this happened in a vacuum, as though nothing is happening and nothing did happen in Lebanon, in Gaza, in Syria, in Yemen. But it did happen, and it led to a new, very dangerous uh, spiral of a widening Middle East conflict. Russia resolutely condemns the attack on Lebanon and calls on Israeli authorities to immediately stop using force and withdraw their troops from the Lebanese territory. Well, there is no justification for uh, fresh civilian victims amongst the civilians, and their number is already in the thousands. We express our solidarity with the leadership and the people of the friendly country of Lebanon who are um, undergoing an armed aggression, and we will send our heartfelt condolences to the families of those who died. We uh, demand a full comprehensive implementation of Resolution 1701. It contains the obligations on Israel to end all the offensive military operations, to withdraw their military from southern Lebanon, and end the occupation of Lebanese territories, as well as the obligations on Hezbollah to withdraw the units north of the Litani River. The Israeli side has to ensure rigorously the safety of the interim forces in Lebanon, who are undergoing unpredictable risks because of the Israeli incursion. We'd like to recall that the threats to the health and life of Blue Helmets could amount to a war crime. We also decisively condemn the killing of Nasrallah. We reject the fact that in order to eliminate him, a residential quarter in Lebanese capital uh, had 80 bombs weighing one ton uh, drop, dropped on it. As a result, six high-rise buildings were destroyed. How can you call this a discriminatory selective action here? This political elimination is fraught with catastrophic consequences for Lebanon and the Middle East as a whole. Western Jerusalem, I'm sure, understood that, but they intentionally decided to go ahead and do this. And this way, this means that the Israeli side shoulders the full responsibility for the subsequent escalation and its consequences, including the consequences for the people of Israel. 
Within the framework of its mandate to maintain international peace and security, the Security Council has to make Israel immediately end the hostilities. And we all have the duty to make every effort to create the conditions for the political and diplomatic settlement. In this context, we note the signals sent by Tehran that do not wish to see a further a spiral of confrontation. Madam President, the Security Council in the um, recent days um, um, is being frequently and seemingly correctly criticized because of its inability to end violence in the area of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, at the same time, those who follow our work knows very well that 14 out of 15 members of the Security Council have already would have undertaken the measures to compel parties to peace, would have saved this way the lives of thousands of innocent women, children, and the elderly. And Israel would not have been able to act as brazenly and with such disregard to international law if they didn't feel themselves um, under an unequivocal and all-around protection by the United States. For their ally, the Middle East, Washington has already used the veto in Security Council 5, and since the beginning of June has intentionally been trying to pull the wool over our eyes, advertising their so-called Biden plan and its quiet diplomacy to arrive at a deal between Hamas and Israel. To be perfectly honest with you, we are left with the impression by all of this uh, that these mediated negotiations are something that Washington is conducting with itself. And it is very symbolic here, therefore, that the approval to eliminate Hezbollah and start a very dangerous spiral of regional escalation was given by the Israeli Prime Minister from New York after he delivered an openly militaristic statement in the General Assembly. This is the kind of a well-tuned duet, uh, distinguished colleagues, we have to deal with. And the question, of course, is not in the moral and political support, but also it has to do with the multi-billion supplies of weapons that Washington continues supplying to Israel despite the fact that it's used to annihilate 42,000 Palestinians. Um, Israel, which of course doesn't need any kind of mediation and continues its, in its brutal campaign. As a result of this, the flame of this conflict is growing wider and wider and is bringing in newer and newer neighbors of Israel in the region. The dangerous illusion here is that the, um, this flame um, will leave Israel unscathed. This flame has already consumed the lives of remaining Israeli hostages, whereas Western Jerusalem is pretending that all of this is part of their plan, and at the same time showing complete disregard to the public opinion in Israel itself. Madam President, another dangerous illusion is that Israel, having a considerable military supremacy, a plans to deal with the crises they provoked on them, themselves, it is becoming increasingly clear that that the plans of the Israeli leadership is to pay any price so as to trigger a conflict between their main regional adversary, Iran, and the United States. It's difficult to say whether Washington understands this, but so far this show has been going on following the Israeli script. And if it reaches its finale, the conflict can reach an unimaginable level of escalation and will threaten not just the Middle East, but the entire world. We are convinced that it is in our interest to prevent such a scenario. We would like to believe that our American colleagues will also finally see the light and will fully realize their responsibility they shoulder as permanent members of the Security Council. Madam President, the only way out of this situation in the Middle East we see as as using all of the vast toolkits the Security Council has. This toolkit allows us to effectively achieve at an end of conflicts and ensuring that Security Council resolutions are implemented. Any other initiatives will just be a mitigating stopgap and will not be effective. We see no alternative to making parties to the conflict to immediately have a ceasefire in Gaza, which is to be accompanied by an exchange of hostages and prisoners and organizing a full and unimpeded humanitarian access in the Strip. This can help set the foundation for the relaunching of a peace settlement of the Palestinian issues on the international basis, which is itself is based on the principle of two states, and this is something that we have always 
has spoken in favor of. The second area of our efforts is also obvious. It's an immediate ceasefire on the south of Lebanon and a general rele- rejection by any direct or indirect participants of the conflict from using forced provocations and hateful rhetoric. Madam President, today's news that the Secretary General is a persona non grata is Israel is unheard of and is a, a, is, is a slap not just on the UN but on all of us. We call on the members of the Security Council and the UN to react to this outrageous act. And I repeat, once again, in order to uh, deal with all of these issues, we at the Security Council have the tools. The, what it's at issue here is having the political will. We have the will. Do you? We urge you all to answer this question as soon as possible. I thank you.